Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm in the middle of the Great Ball Contraption Loop at BrickCon in Bellevue, Washington. I'm joined once again by one of the talented builders here. If you want to introduce yourself, and we'll take a look at this fantastic loop. Sure. Thanks, Josh. My name's Neil Snowball, down from Vancouver, part of the, the VLC group up there and uh, a GBC builder. We got uh, 10 builders here today with a loop of roughly 30 to 40 feet, uh, 50 modules, give or take. Though we're having a few, uh, a few teething problems today with, uh, with things wearing out fairly quickly. It is the end of the season, so uh, you know, things are showing their age for a little bit. All right. In the, the off-season during the winter, we'll have some work done and improvements. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Plus, all those motors need a nice good nap to recover. <laughs> well, we can launch on in here then. Absolutely. So the first set, uh, first set of modules we've got is Amanda Payton out of Wisconsin. So uh, she starts with this lovely yellow vertical uh, lift tower using the, uh, the cheese wedge uh, approach to lift it up. And that's going into an Akiyuki snake ramp. From that is into Amanda's signature build, which is the, uh, the caterpillar. So we love this. It's a real crowd pleaser at the events. You know, everybody catches the eye, and that wave motion is uh, is very, very good. Latest upgrade for uh, for this year is the white tiles on top are actually glow in the dark. So in the uh, the low light events, there's a bit extra uh, movement and show going on. So from that, the uh, the caterpillar is feeding into a modified Akiyuki train module. So uh, Amanda's been modifying this to. Uh, to make it run for the various shows that she's doing this year. So we got an automated uh, loader. And then while we're only running a single truck today, um, it can run two trucks with the bypass in the center. And then it offloads at the uh, other end of the track into a whole set of other modules. All right, moving down. So Amanda feeds into um, a Brick Fair Virginia uh, workshop module that we're basically using as a regulator. So it takes the, uh, the large dump of balls from the train module and regulates them out to a much, uh, a much more controlled uh, run of single feed balls that's going through pinwheel sidestepper and then into a module that people may have seen before this year, which is Nana King. Lauren uh, Lovelace built that. Uh, first show was at Brick Slopes a few weeks ago. Um, had its few teething problems there, but it's back. It's had, uh, it's had an overhaul over the last couple of weeks been running great this weekend so uh, we're liking that module it's uh, it's a real crowd pleaser everybody loves donkey kong and uh, you know, we have people come up and go oh look there's donkey kong and go straight to it so that's uh, that's really nice feeding from that is into the frozen themed uh, wheel so the wheel design is pinwheel this is built by roxanne baxter a relatively new gbc builder on the uh, the show circuit this year so uh, she brought that one in from Nebraska. Been running pretty nicely this weekend. It's a good, uh, simple module. Very visually appealing, which uh, is what we like. We, we try for two things. It's either very technically appealing or very visually appealing. So running those into a bunch of modules by uh, a local builder here, a young guy called uh, Brendan. So he's, uh, it's his second year. First year was uh, here last year and uh, He's had some time over the winter to uh, to build some new modules and get them going. So uh, we're glad to have him. It's always good to have new uh, and young talent in the GBC pool because these are our builders of tomorrow for when the rest of us decide to retire. <laughs> All right. Running from there is into a module that people may have seen uh, over the last couple of years. This is Kraken Attacking by Jeff Strong. Everybody loves this one. Beautiful module. The lovely uh, S-lift at the start. And then the, the roll down through the uh, Pacific Northwest landmarks and the Kraken that moves at the bottom. It's a very, uh, very beautiful module. So that's feeding into Jeff's newest module of the year. So uh, he's built this uh, tower module. It's called Screwed Over. So it starts with a, a simple ball pump up to an elevated height and uh, capitalizing on the new uh, corkscrew piece that came out uh, in the last year. He's built a full run of those and uh, using that just to uh, 
convey balls across uh, across a gap into a drop tower on the far side. And we're using that to span over an independent build that we've got here. This is uh, one of the, the local guys, Steve Putz, who's built this. It was at uh, Bricks Cascade uh, at the start of the year. And so it likes to, uh, likes to run in uh, self-circulation mode. And so it's just been running non-stop all, uh, all day, circulating around. It's a little different because this runs on mine storms compared to the train controllers and motors that uh, the rest of us are on. But uh, yeah, it, and it fits nicely in the negative space from John's screwed over build. I love this here because it doesn't look like the balls should be able to stay on there. It seems like they'll fall off, but it just it moves them along perfectly along, along the top of the bridge. Oh, absolutely. This corkscrew is a magical piece. It's, uh, it's nice to see the, the way that people are invest, inventing ways to, uh, to make it work for them in GBC. And so that's been, uh, that's been a good thing. We're going to give this a quick stir. There we go. It's run by a ball pump, and as we all know, ball pumps are some of the finickiest modules you can get. They look great, they run perfectly fine for a while, and then this one, every so often, we just need to stab it with, uh, <laughs> with a poker and it comes back to life. We don't know why, why that is, but uh, it is what it is. We'll have to live with it. All right, so Jeff is feeding into a string of modules by myself. So there's a variety of these. You've probably seen a bunch of them. First off is uh, what I call Workshop Wonderland. So it's versions from various workshops. We've got Bricks by the Bay. Then we've got an extended uh, Brick World uh, module. Then we've got a couple of Brick Slopes. So Brick Slopes 2021, 2022. Brick Slopes 2023 is currently sitting off the table um, being badly behaved. We've got another Brick World module sitting there at the end. And that is feeding into at this point, it's probably now my signature build, which is the Leap of Faith. So it's a, a four-foot drop tower, no guy lines on it. It just stands perfectly upright and uh, drops balls into the catch net. So the catch net working great now. So some of you may have seen it on uh, on other videos that uh, that it wasn't working quite as well. It would l leak balls all over. So uh, over the summer, I rebuilt the catch net knitted it all together with uh, with nets and it uh, it works great now so that's feeding into a run along the front we've got uh, Emmett's crane so it's uh, another pinwheel module with a few variations by myself another one that kids love because everybody loves Emmett and uh, and so that draws kids in to see Emmett We're feeding into that is what we discussed last time the Barbie module or the the pink pusher very uh, very good module. It's been uh, been great, just cranking away uh, all day. And uh, that then feeds into the Carrot Patch, one of my uh, earlier modules that has evolved over time to, uh, to get to where it is. So it's a simple stepper and conveyor, but it's all themed to do with carrots. Mainly because I went to the pick a brick wall and picked up way too many carrots and thought, what do I do with these? And somehow a carrot-based GBC is what uh, what came out of that. After that is my 2023 module. It is Slapshot. Being a Canadian, I'm a big hockey fan. So this is a tribute to hockey, also a tribute to Lego sports sets of the early 2000s. It's nice to get some of those uh, weird and wonderful pieces in there. Very underrepresented theme from the some of those early sports themes. It is, but GBC builders love those weird and wacky pieces we've all got the uh the half pipe slopes and the uh the skateboard ramps this is just another fa facet of it that uh, we can put to use for gbc okay so feeding into that is another pinwheel side stepper love, i love these little modules because they work really well on corners they're just a quick filler and they uh they do the job from that, it feeds into the horrendously coloured, uh, what I call lift tower. So it's an internal lift. So it uh, scoops up at the bottom. It's as, uh, almost as low a uh, pickup point as you can get. Pulls them up the side walls and then out the side ramp. So this thing is also a recirculating module and it runs both directions. So it doesn't matter which way we plug it in. It's always useful. So that's sitting into... The corner section where we've got Rainbow Stepper, 
rainbow zapper feeding into my triple lifter, <coughs> which is my three arm lift module. That's dropping off into what is currently dropping on into a piece of racer ramp because the previous incumbent in that spot is dead on the table behind us. It's had a bad day. Um, so that's running into the front where we've got a bunch of brick world tipper modules and uh, pusher modules. But what you might notice here is there seems to be something in the way. Something that I have turned the green monster. Uh, I'm also a bit of a baseball fan. <laughs> so uh, the builder is not from Boston. I don't think they like baseball, but it's big and it's green. So this is a scaled up version, although it's not currently running. It's a scaled up version of a little module that we've got at the front here, which also isn't running. But it's a kind of a proof of concept. So it uses the large Technic balls to, uh, to get it. But it has a, a oh, well, by the way, it has a tendency to overheat the motor, so we need to, uh, to give it a rest every so often. Keep going. There we go, we got it running. So it's a lovely little standalone piece. I have asked Rick that now that he's grown this one up to uh, this size, is when are we getting the scaled up train controller to go with it? This thing is just an absolute beast here. You look at the number of Technic elements in these two giant wheels, it's crazy. And the, I love the, the brick bending going on here as well. Yeah, this is, this is flexing to another, <laughs> another degree. You see people flexing with their goats and things like that, but this is, this is Technic GBC flexing at, uh, at its best. Where do these, the, the bigger uh, red and blue balls come from? So those are um, Technic balls. You may have seen them if people have watched anything from LEGO Masters New Zealand. They did a GBC style theme, uh, something that Robin Sather, who was the, the brick master there and is in the room uh, with us today, he came up with that for, uh, for LEGO Masters New Zealand and similar ball size. We've got those in, uh, in play today. I don't think we're all going to adopt this standard. <laughs> it seems a little brick intensive, but it is a really nice showpiece nonetheless. So moving on from there, we go from a pusher upper that's currently being loaded up and is struggling. I got throw a bunch of balls on the white ramp, guys. A little bit of work being done here. Yep. Okay, so that goes into uh, the perennial favorite, Alex Papil's glittering wheel. So it's a self-standing wheel. It's, uh, it's been to many a show. We, we love it here in the Pacific Northwest. There's something uh, quite exciting about watching it go and, uh, and lift those balls. And then that's going into uh, a module that Alex has also brought, which is a, a three seesaw module. Nice, uh, <coughs> consistent module for us. It's been running nicely, and uh, which is always great. You know, it's, it's good to have that mix of consistent modules we don't need to worry about so that we can focus on the ones that we do. And then uh, rolling on, we're getting into a number of uh, uh, vertical conveyors, basically just shifting modules up and down. We've had a few bits and pieces in here today, and that is feeding into, eventually, Kevin Mitchum's layout, which is currently bypassed. Normally, it would have a train layout running, but... Uh, <coughs> The train has been a little, uh, a little fussy today, so uh, it's having a bit of a rest. But the way it's designed is, when that happens, the GBC modules running through the middle can bypass the train layout completely, still keep the loop going, and run all the way through. So we've got uh, we've got a macaroni stepper. We've got uh, I think that's blue baller, uh, maybe not. Yep. So we've got blue baller in the middle there. And then that's dropping down into the blue sweeper. This blue sweeper module is something that um, that people, when they see it, get a little nervous about because the sweeper isn't connected to the drive arm. It's on a, a push system. So it will occasionally just stop momentarily. And people go, what, what's it doing? It's just catching up. And so uh, it's just pushing through into uh, another uh, vertical lift module. And then we've got uh, a double wheel module of Kevin's that uh, is feeding into um, what he calls his B-stepper. 
which is a zigzag stepper feeding into a final vertical lift. And then we drop from that uh, vertical lift into John Sherman's builds. And we're going to start off. All right. We're going to start off John's builds with Escapade. And that is uh, a serpentine lift running into an Akiyuki ramp. And then we've got uh, Armed and Dangerous. It's a lovely little module of John's that. Uh, that has uh, got this nice uh, lift mechanism to get uh, the elevation. That feeds down to a little bit of a ball run into the bottom of what is called ball run. So that lifts it up. It's got a splitter module at the top. And so as the balls come up, they go one of two ways and then down the flex tube ramp out to the bottom. <clears throat> Popular module, this one. There's a lot going on. It's, uh, visually uh, appealing to people so we find people stop here a little bit to uh, to watch them go through the loop so when we exit that that's going into rat stamper xl so this is the slower double capacity rat stamper module that uh, that john has built it's a, a nice pick mechanism so it's running there doing a, a double pick each time and feeding into his uh, vertical stepper module. Again, you'll notice with John's all very beautifully, uh, beautifully colored. The color schemes really stand out, uh, but show the, the mechanisms as well, which is what we'd expect from uh, an engineer that works here at Boeing. So that exits into a spiral ramp, and then the spiral ramp feeds into the original size rat stamper, so this is a single pick module. You'll notice it's a lot more energetic than the previous one, but uh, it's running at pretty much twice the speed, so it's still got the same uh, overall throughput. And then once we go from there, we're into the Shermanized ball counter. So this is uh, at least version two of John's ball counter, had a complete overhaul over the, win over the summer, ready for this show. And uh, there we go, we got a little bit of uh, unload happening on the counter. So yeah, John's completely rebuilt and improved some of the gate mechanisms on the cutoff so that it'll run smoothly. And uh, it seems to have been fine all day so far. And then the final thing after that, when it counts up, I don't know what we're on, looks like we're in somewhere in the 3,000, 3,500 ball range so far today. And then that's feeding into the macaroni stepper that again has had a bit of an overhaul. The, uh, the drive piece down the middle that you see there has been flipped over. So rather than having a flat, uh, a flat push against the, the vertical lift, it's now got a curve, lifted a little nicer. It's a, a, lot, uh, a lot more forgiving on the motor, that's for sure. So it's run much better. And then that is feeding out into the overpass which is uh, John's entry gateway. It's a, it's a nice size myself at six foot five. I can get under it no problem, so I don't have to duck. That's my always my problem with uh, over over the top modules is uh, are they big enough for me <laughs> to get under? And then from there, runs across. It's got a vertical drop, and then it's going out into the start point, which was Amanda's modules. Fantastic work here. So, so how many people did you say were involved this year? We've got 10 people. We had 50 modules when we set it up and start turning it on this morning. We're probably somewhere plus or minus two or three from that number. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. We've got a, a good mix of people that uh, have come in, not just locally, but as I say, we've people come from uh, Wisconsin, Nebraska. I've come down from Canada. So it's. Uh, GBC in the Pacific Northwest has, has become a nice uh, meeting point for a number of folks to, uh, to, uh, to meet at and uh, put our shows together. It's, it's been really cool to see it grow, especially in this part of the country, because traditionally this wasn't where you had very big GBC layouts, but it's been cool to see more people get involved here. Absolutely. We have the, the benefit of uh, three major shows on the Pacific uh, Northwest every year. And so some of us are at each of those shows. We get to know each other, we get to uh, 
we get to know how each of our modules work, where they fail, where they don't, and the, the reliability of it. So that consistency helps us put on good shows as well, that uh, we've got a, a good core group of people that uh, can help with that. So we only want to get bigger and better. So we, we encourage anybody who, uh, who really wants to get into it to uh, come check us out, maybe do an internship with a, a show. One of the things we thought about is if you want to get into GBC, come and spend an hour with the GBC team at the table and understand what it takes to keep it going. If you're still happy about it, build away. You're probably going to enjoy it. If that hour of torture of keeping things running is not for you, you probably dodged a bullet. So we're, we're here at BrickCon, which of course is in uh, Bellevue now, but the other shows that you were talking about, where are those shows located if people in the kind of the Pacific Northwest want to check out maybe some other shows in the area? Absolutely. So the, the first one of 2024, that will be Bricks Cascade. It's the third weekend of March this year. A month later, everybody's up to Canada to Vancouver for Brick Can. That's uh, third weekend of April. And then here we are in uh, BrickCon at the end of the year. Although the date has changed for us, we're in a new venue, we're in a new date. It's all very new and exciting for us. You may even notice we have carpet on the floor now. This is a big thing for us on the GBC side. One, the balls don't bounce anywhere. The other one is it's really good on the feet. <laughs> the amount of standing around that we do, we, uh, we really, really appreciate the carpet. You deserve the upgrade. You work so hard here, everyone involved in GBC, so it's great to see that they're giving you some, uh, some comfort upgrades as well. Absolutely. We've got a great spot as well. You know, we're in one quarter of the hall, but you know, we've got quite a lot of space around us, so it means that we can get more crowds in, more people can see what's going on, and that's what we want. We want to bring the, uh, the GBC builders of tomorrow, inspire them to get going and, uh, and see what there is to explore. That is great to hear. We always appreciate all the work that you and the rest of the GBC builders put into the display. Thank you so much for taking the time to take us around everything here. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Good to see you guys. And obviously, for myself, I want to thank all of the other GBC builders for, uh, for coming here and helping out. It's, uh, it's very much a team effort, and uh, we all appreciate each other helping out. <laughs>